Hello and welcome to another video. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about your cyber brain or your second brain. I'm sure you've heard the term second brain thrown around on the internet but you might be thinking what is it? Well to be honest it's just a collection of notes and almost like a management system that you can use to efficiently run either your business or your life or to help with studying and productivity. So I've took my learnings from how to take smart notes which is a great book but what I have I've done for you is I've actually built a second brain for you and threw in so many useful resources for cyber security. The Notion template I'm linking in the description is completely free. I'm not charging for it. So yeah, click on the link in the description to check it out. And in this video, I'm just going to be unpacking it a little bit and talking about how to use it and the different areas within it. So you can take this Notion template and build on it and expand on it and use that as a foundation for your learning going forward. And it's important important to say that it is GRC focused so the resources within there are going to be primarily around governance, risk and compliance. However I've chucked a few other things in there as well to try and make it useful to other areas of cyber security too. Nevertheless let's get into it and I'll show you the Notion template. Okay so this is what the Notion template looks like. It's fully customizable at the top. I've got some stuff in here that you can just delete when you get your own copy. It's just got an affiliate link for you to sign up and a link to my YouTube channel and LinkedIn but this is where it starts to get juicy. So I've got a ton of resources in here and there's some more below as well and I've also linked to my GRC certification guide too but let's start off with the brain inbox because this is going to be the most important part of the whole Notion template and it's empty pretty much empty but what this is and the way you use it is vital within cyber security. So so what you essentially need to do is whenever you have an idea or you find a link to a resource or someone shares something on social media or a platform and it relates to cyber security you just dump it in here and this is supposed to be messy these are notes only you will understand and to give you an idea I'm going to show you my own personal brain inbox that I'm using too so this is my brain inbox as it is now it needs a little bit of tidying up but typically this is what it will look like so I've chucked in a screenshot of a group that I recently joined on LinkedIn and I've just got a note at the bottom to just explore it and possibly start posting within there. I've got some free courses that I've shared that I found very recently so they're still in here. I've got a note to do some tax code research for when my YouTube and other side hustles start to become profitable. I do need to actually change tax codes and do a little bit of research to, on how to handle that. I've got one of my mentees here that requires help with his CV so I've got a note to just remind me to make sure to review what he has sent me. I've got a few blogs in here that I just want to read. These looked interesting to me and I haven't read them yet. So I will read them and then remove them out of here when I'm done. And I've also got a link to this, which I found recently. It seems to be a very useful library of resources, primarily around data protection and GDPR. It's created by Dmitry Filatov. Apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But yeah, essentially I found this and I really want to take a deep a dive into it so I've just got a note to look at that. So this is kind of my current brain inbox and that's basically how it will work. You find some good resources, you find a blog, you add stuff that is essentially like a to-do list and then what you'll do after that is you will go back to your second brain and then you will do what I call processing it where you find the area that it relates to. So for example for that data privacy notion page that I showed I have dumped it in here it's just at the top. This is where the information will be stored. So you categorize the information, you add it to the area it relates to. You'll see that in here, I've got some other things around data privacy and protection and GDPR. And yeah, that's essentially what happens. So everything goes into your brain inbox. And if you have the time, I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't or can't put it straight into one of the areas that are inside your second brain. But if you don't have the time, if you just have a quick thought, if you just have something that someone sent you that you don't have the time to read, you'll put it in your brain inbox and the objective is to try and keep it as empty or as possible. Every week or so you should be going into here, processing the information, completing your actions, putting it in the right area and what you do is you start to build up a bank of cyber security knowledge and resources. Now this is going to be vital for your career going forward and there's so many benefits to having this because you can take this knowledge anywhere you go, any job, any project that you're involved with and you'll continuously build and create a more refined knowledge 
knowledge bank. Now, of course, you should be careful what you should and shouldn't put into your knowledge bank. I wouldn't keep any private information within there or other people's private information or clients you're working with, that kind of thing. You try and keep it focused on resources and information that you'll need and not specific information about people or clients. So yeah, bottom line is the brain inbox is vital to make this work. Any thoughts, notes, links, anything else goes within there. Once it's in there and you've had time to think about the relevance of the item, where it fits, whether you want to keep it for storage, then you'll find a spot to put it in within your brain inbox. And if nothing exists, then you can of course create new pages and add items and sub items, etc. So yeah, what I've also included here is just a list of some platforms, websites, things you should be aware of and is useful within cybersecurity. You've got some bug bounty programs, you've got some links to courses or websites, etc. I've also included Paul Jeremy's security certification roadmap, and this includes the full raft of 473 cybersecurity certifications that are listed in here and that links to each. So this is fundamental when you're deciding next steps and understanding what you want to do within your career. All these certifications are mapped directly to a domain of cybersecurity or cross domains. So yeah, it's a very useful thing just to have at hand within your brain inbox as you're upskilling and progressing through your career. I've also included my GRC certification guide where I go into a little bit of detail on my thoughts on certifications, some of the fundamental information you should know. I've also included links to GRC certifications that are great to get your career started so you can also check this out too. And I've got a link here on some legal stuff. I find this checklist and this blog very useful for reviewing contracts and legal work. It breaks down into a lot of details so if you're ever involved in contract management or the related legal aspects this is one of the best blogs I've seen that was sent to be by one of my friends who is a lawyer and uses this regularly and he advised that this is a great step-by-step -step checklist and process for business contract reviews so I decided to throw that in and what I've got at the bottom here is just a who to follow so this is just for those that aren't aware of the people on YouTube who are creating great cyber security content so I've included some of the people I follow so you've got the cyber mentor who's got some great courses and lots of certifications and so much stuff you've got Neil Bridges who hosts the cyber insecurity twitch live streams and podcasts and videos there's a ton of stuff David Bumble Network Chuck etc etc Prabhnaya is also great for studying for lots of different exams honestly his content is just a game changer I think that's definitely one you don't want to miss you've also got destination certification who are more centered around some of the ISC squared certifications but are really good to give you a broad overview of cyber security especially if you look at all their CISP content. You've also got John Hammond who's a legend in the game and has got so much experience within cyber security. If you're not subscribed to him you're doing something wrong. Got Boyd Cluis. From what I know his content is more centered around PCI DSS but has got some more general stuff. But yeah if you want to really learn about PCI DSS becoming a QSA you really need to check him out and I've chucked in some others. So yeah those are the people that you need to follow. Once you followed them you can remove this section out of here. I just thought I'd chuck that in. So let's look at a few of these. We don't have time to go over every single one or every single item and sub item within here but for SOC management and this is security operations center management not SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3 reporting and audits which are actually over here. Anyway SOC management. So within this I've linked some really good information about security operations centers this won't teach you how to become a SOC analyst this isn't what this is focused on as I said this is taking the GRC perspective so it's looking at it more holistically and linking documents such as this about 11 strategies of a world-class security operation center looking at the maturity of a SOC you also have the SOC capability maturity model which is a great resource for SOC teams to increase their maturity over time you've also got questions for a SOC to consider so these are questions questions you can ask when applying to become part of a SOC team or if you're already part of a SOC team or onboarding a new client to your SOC service these are things you will consider of course there are a lot more but this is just a high level overview so yeah and let's say for other areas let's take a quick look at OSINT here I've just linked to Bellingcat's online investigation toolkit I've actually uploaded a copy of that there and honestly that is just so detailed and there's so much information about OSINT also included a couple other links so some of these areas aren't as populated 
of others but it's your job to populate this this is now your cyber brain you can take this adapt this remove stuff change stuff add stuff to essentially make it how you want to be and as you progress through your career this will increase this knowledge base will get bigger and bigger so if we take a quick look at architecture for example it's just linked to Togaf and Sabsa which are essentially architecture certification paths resources frameworks whatever you want to call them I'm oversimplifying it a little bit but you can take a deep dive to learn more about enterprise security architecture and IT architecture in general you've also got some specific things like the OODA loop which is very specific to a SOC team and if you are in a SOC team you really need to understand this and of course I've linked some great ISO, NIST, NCSC, CIS critical controls, NHS digital, the PCI DSS standards and links towards it so yeah essentially this is what your cyber brain will look like it will point you towards relevant standards and information however what I will say is as you build up your cyber brain you begin to take more handwritten notes and still include links within there so I've not included a lot of my notes this isn't actually my fault cyber security brain I've just pulled some stuff from it that might be useful to you all but as you can see with the GDPR section I have actually copied and pasted or handwritten some stuff that is actually useful day to day and included links to deeper dives so that's essentially what you want to do you want to have some handwritten notes that summarize the area or include stuff that you just need to know and then you have additional resources and deeper dives linked within and you can structure this however you want but this is just the basics you need to get started for ISO 27001 I have access to the official standards and other information that I haven't included in here and you couldn't include it in here because those documents aren't shareable however what I have done is linked to a free ISO toolkit that I found online and honestly this thing is gold I wish I found this earlier but yeah you can download a full toolkit and get so many templates and documents and registers and everything you need to get started with ISO 27001 compliance with ISO 9001 it is a quality management area so I didn't really dive too deep in there because it's not strictly cyber security however there is just a mandatory documents list linked within there so yeah that is the cyber security brain that will be linked in the description there will also be a link to sign up to notion it is completely free and there is some additional features that you can pay for so if you sign up using my link below you will be supporting this channel and supporting me and creating more content like this for you there's a lot more I want to do with notion in the future I have created the GRC certification guide and the cyber security second brain which I might build on in the future and add more things to it that could help you if you want to take a look at that click on the link in the description and if you want to get a copy of this book on how to take smart notes that will also be linked in the description too and what I will say is notion can be a management system for life in general I have a page within there for cyber security and my notes but I also use it to help manage my social media my personal finances my content generation on this channel projects that I'm working on storing tools and AI tools and websites that I come across that I use I use it for research also when I read a book I also have notion open and I take notes and stuff that I find interesting or when I take more of a look at there is so many use cases for notion honestly it's a great system and I'm not just saying that I've actually been using notion for years way before I became a partner and I've promoted it with nothing to gain in the past however now that I'm an affiliate I'm a partner with notion I will be transparent and say if you do sign up to one of the paid programs you'll be supporting me and my content so check it out use a free version use a paid version use whatever you need to meet the requirements I've tried so many note-taking apps honestly I've been through them all notion allows you to build so much there are so many different use cases for it learn how to use it it's so easy create the brain inbox that is one of the most important pieces that will simplify everything you do so yeah thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this one and i'll see you in the next one over and out